Okay. Yeah, we'll get this started here. We're going to show you guys how to get your first row of starter strip on, your corners up, and then we'll get the first piece of siding on too. So I'll show you how exactly how we get a wall started here. Let's see. So what I'll do is we leveled in here with this fascia and we we drop down we drop down five eighths to allow room for the soffit here. The top mark should be five eighths. And right on right there. Now what you can do too just to double check, we're going an inch down from the top of foundation. What I like to do on these as well is from the top, I'll just make a mark, let's say right at 64. And that's not very exact, but it's gonna give us an idea whether or not it's right up top too. So you'll make that same mark on the Yeah, I'll make that same mark on the corner. But you measured, oh, whoops. You already had it measured, right? 115 and 3 eighths? I think, well, that was before you bumped the nail. Okay, well, we'll double check that then. You bumped it down, right? Might be a quarter now. Well, your nail was pretty far out, so it's kind of hard to tell. That's right on right there. And, 114 strong is the exact so 115. to the top of the foundation. Yeah. So 115 strong is the exact 115 strong. And these corners have the foam in them. So I always like to set a nail here and leave it poking out. That way the foam never slides out of the bottom of the corner. This Tyvek's pretty chewed up. Probably should do a few patches in it. Yeah, I know that. A little bit of zip tape. And the, really this side over here should be the same, but you never know. Oh, that other level is getting replaced. Actually got replaced right. under warranty. Yeah, finally. This the dealer rep finally made it out. Right there. We're leveling with that fascia. And depending on the thickness of your soffit, this soffit works well to have it 5 eighths down. The soffit's actually a half inch thick, but then we got to account a little bit for our the bottom leg of the F channel. So 5 eighths down. You can see my tape needs to go down just a little bit. I'll give that guy a little bump there. There we are. Take that down so it doesn't fall on my head when I move the ladder. And what do we have? 114 and 38 strong. So this side is quite a bit different. 114 and 38 strong. Just double check that, yeah. Looking good. And what I can do too is just check that 114, 112 is where the bottom of the leg of the siding is going to be. So we actually could have made his corner a little bit bigger. That way we have a bigger piece to end with. But I think it'll work out okay. Just one thing to make note of. Anyway, we could make a slight adjustment there. 
All right, so what I forgot to mention is that we're dropping it down also an inch. So we had that 114 and then we're making that 115. So that means the top rip of siding is gonna be at 115 and the bottom of it should be at 112. So it'll be a three inch rip up top. So that's actually pretty good. Doesn't get much better than that. You wanna look out where you have it really close to the layout on an eight inch increment. So it's gonna be 115 and three eighths strong. This corner over here will be 115 and three eighths strong. And right now it's pretty cold out. So we're using the thin tool to cut these outside corners. And again, I'm setting that nail there so the foam can't slide out the bottom of the super corner. I can't go any more than an inch out because it'll start to bubble the corner out. And right there, they left their tie bar just flapping around. And I want to make sure I get that in nice and tight and straight. That way I can get a good line on it. Otherwise, it's going to mess up my chalk line. So. Oops. There we go. I had enough staples. All right, so I'll come back when we're setting the corners. Yeah, somebody lost their egg. So yeah, our starter strip is two and a half, or two and three eighths. So we'll mark up two and a half on the corner and one inch. And it gets set at the one inch mark to the top of the foundation. It's just easier. Well, if you hold the corner up here, it's yeah. easier to mark it, but he's still making it difficult. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you always want to... Bend over. Uh, I can't bend over yeah, so well. You. So, you want to check the factory ends of the corner, make sure that they're square. This part's square here, but over here, we have almost an eighth inch out of square. So I want to square that up. But I know for the sake of measuring, I can measure off of there and it'll be fine. I want my corner sitting as flat as I can get it or at least pretty close. And what did I do with my tape? Uh oh. They leave it in the basement. I must have lost it walking up the hill. Found it. Yep. Yeah, I put a nail on the bottom there. It's on the front. So we have one fifteen and three eight strong. Pretty close there. I want to make sure my my tape isn't angled at all. That's a little marked up, but I think an eraser will take care of that. Right now, Roger's going to get that set. He's going to get it hanging from the top nail. Actually, it would make sense to just set it from the top. Yeah, just grab a ladder and just hang it from that top nail. That way the corner can grow downwards. What was your line at? 64? 64, yeah. Yeah, you could. It's a general idea. Not like a hard, fast rule. Because my mark isn't exact. It's... Yeah. 
more reference points is better. All right, where's that thin tool? Right here. Oh, I see it. Trim the bottom a little bit. Hopefully, I can do get it down with this. our inch mark and then our two and a half inch mark and that uh, mark I made on Rogers was actually completely unnecessary but that is a method you can use because this one I'm gonna just set off the top as well and the bottom should be pretty close to an inch once the top is set got an inch top of foundation two and a half is the top of starter it's just easier to mark it at waist height than it is to bend around and mark it once the corner is up and you make sure that that foam's up high enough where it's not gonna be on top of the on the outside of that now and I'm just gonna go for it from down here for now and I'll let it sink down too low I'll put my nail in the center of the slot and let the corner sit down and I'll adjust it when I get to the top it's not all the way tight so it can move and you saw it slide down so I'll put these nails at the top of the slot as well that way when it slides up they'll be centered in the slot same thing down here. I'm gonna go ahead and put it at the top. And right now I'm just eyeballing that that is in plane with the house on this side and in plane with the house on this side. And sometimes it takes some small adjusting. Whoops, forgot to go at the top of the slot. Force a habit. And you don't want to smack this corner because it'll break right now. I think that's looking pretty good this way. And it's looking pretty good that way. It'll change a little bit once these are nailed. Oh, 
home's not in the way. And right there is right on with that mark. We'll put this nail at the top of the slot and let it hang. That's not going to go down anymore. Now the rest can go in the center of the slot. And I'm just going to double check that that is on the top of the foundation. Right on. Okay. So now we'll chalk the line at that mark we already have there, that two and a half. I will mention that once again these corners are his is 115 and mine is 115 and 3 8 so I already know that that top rip of siding is going to be tapered which is not ideal what I could have done is had him cut his corner to the same length as mine and then that top rip of siding wouldn't be tapered. So right there is right on. And once again, you want to use blue chalk or some chalk that is not permanent. Because right there I got it on the corner. But that will just wipe off. So we have our corners up, our corners are an inch down from top of foundation. We got our starter strip on in a manner that's going to put the siding an inch down from the top of the foundation. And we'll get the first piece of starter on, and we'll get our starter row on, and then we'll get our siding on. And the siding is going to lap in that direction. All right. Okay, fair warning, fair warning. This stuff is probably supposed to be stapled in the holes and, or nailed in the holes and loosely attached so that it can expand and contract. But I haven't encountered any problems doing this in the 12 years or so that I've been installing vinyl, so. Oh goodness, okay, there we go. It went, finally. Do we want to throw some zip tape over those rips? Yeah, we could do that. We as in you. It sounded like you were volunteering for the task. And another thing to note is that you don't really want to put a joint in the metal where you know that you're going to have the end of your siding because the end of your siding could potentially get bound up believe it or not it could actually get bound up on the edge there and then it will stop that siding from being able to expand and contract which will result in oil canning not sure if they call for a gap there or not I've gap starter strip as much as 16 inches before and it wasn't wasn't a problem. But I'll go just a little tighter here for sake of demonstration. And once again, it might be called for for the stuff to move and it could put potentially cause oil canning but. haven't seen it not saying it doesn't happen though the builder had a bunch of scraps of starter so I'm just gonna burn them up for him And 
hopefully I don't end up with a seam that ends up on like right there. I don't think I will. Pretty sure a 12 foot piece is going to land somewhere in that bigger piece there. I think you could nail it about every 12 inches, but it's easy if you staple it to nail a lot more than you need to. Okay. Got that thing ready to go. None of those rips are, or all the rips are taped off. Oh, oh it's being ornery. Mostly. A lot of times what happens on the bottom is they have that green plate and the green plates wider wider than the studs so the bottom of the corner gets kicked down a little bit. And as I like to say, sometimes there's not a whole lot I can do about it. It's just how the cookie crumbles. You can see it's kind of in right there and it kind of tails out at the bottom. But it's a good happy medium. And now we'll get that first row of siding on. Did I miss any? I mean, there's so many little so tears. Many little ones, but they're but, no more than the staple holes. Yeah, we're going to spend all day if we want to take care of those i got the the bigger ones yeah it's kind of a joke it looks like they they had a board with some nails in it and they just dragged yeah. it right on that thing there's a bunch this right there 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 there, there. I'm not worried about it. that's on the overlap the other thing too is looking at whether or not there's entry points and there's really only entry points on these windows here the window there you'll have water get in right here and go down and on the other side go down and right there and right there so as long as these i mean we could tape these ones yeah this one i don't think would cause a problem that's actually a staple hole so we could just tape those couple there underneath the entry point and we'll be good technically you're not supposed to leave probably any holes where do you stop? but where do we stop when the framer does a poor job try to make it right try to make it so that it's not gonna rot out of the house years down the road Try to do right by the homeowners. Might not be up to the manufacturer's specs. Good there. But really snuff. it'll be good. And now we're starting on this end so that the overlap, you can see how I was saying that It'd be about in the middle of this longer piece of starter, so it was about right. Um, the overlap will be facing that way. And now I'm making sure that this siding doesn't get hooked on the bottom of the corner. Sometimes that likes to happen. See, now it's inside that corner. It's not catching on the bottom of that nail fin. 
I can feel it and I can see it. And they're all clipped in. I can see everything's clipped in. Sometimes if you have little pieces, you end up accidentally not clipping in a whole piece of little starter. Like, whoops, you look up underneath yeah, there. And <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll leave my staple a quarter inch back. That way this thing can never pull out of that corner any more than a quarter. I don't think that's technically right, but I like to do it that way. Looks nicer. Reload. I'm just holding maybe five pounds of pressure, maybe less, up to make sure that's fully engaged with that starter strip. And I'm putting my staple at the top of that nail slot and in the center. So that the piece can't sag down. And you can see it can still move freely. Did you measure that thing? Or are you cutting a three foot starter? Okay. So to end this wall, I'm just going to butt it into there. I mean, I cut it so that it's on the inside of that trough. It looks like it's to the left side of that S, the hole with the S on it. And I'm just going to eyeball this straight up. You could square this until you get the hang of making a square cut. And again, I'm letting that side drop down so that I'm angled up. And I'm going to make sure that this is on the outside of that nail fin. See, right there. And I'm just crawling on my knees to make sure that I get this all clipped in. See, right there, it wanted to go on the wrong side of that starter. But I can see now that all of that is clipped in. And I have about a maybe inch and a quarter overlaps there. You have to check with your manufacturer on the required overlap. But that's what I like to do. So that's that guys, we got the corner set and got the first row of siding on. There's more in-depth videos that you can watch. But that's just the short one I wanted to do. So, till next time. I won't say subscribe. But you can subscribe if you want to. That's what it looks like. You can see our siding is up just a little bit inside the corner. That's the way I like to do it. Some people like to hang the corners down an inch or two inches or some people just leave them down like six inches and don't even care about anything but I think that gets you a pretty nice look to have them um, the bottom of your siding is about straight with the bottom of the corner